Hi kids, welcome back. Welcome to another year. It's uh, 2021. Our first lesson for the year is going to be lesson 3.1. Jesus is fully God. Hopefully you've had a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year as well. It was probably a little different from other years as you were probably just at home with your family, which is great, which is amazing. Maybe not as many relatives over, but uh, we're trusting in the Lord that 2021 will have another wonderful, wonderful Christmas and new years for 2022. Wow. So we thank God we're back. Uh, hopefully you guys are ready. You had a chance to work through your books. You had a chance to rest. You're back probably uh, doing your uh, remote schooling. So we thank you for joining us. Thank you parents again for uh, connecting with us and helping us together with uh, the staff and the and the volunteers at the church at the Met to help your uh, to help everybody here cope with some difficulties and through the word of the Lord, we know we can do it. So we'll start off with a beautiful lesson about Jesus and how Jesus is fully God. So let's ask God in prayer to be with us as we continue. Dear Heavenly Father, we come together in the name of Jesus Christ to thank you much. Uh, thank you so much, Lord, for another wonderful year. Uh, it's been uh, it's been difficult, as you know, Lord, but uh, we know you are with us and we are with you. So with that, we can we can face another year. So we thank you for that. Thank you for giving us another day uh, to praise you and to worship you and to know that we are loved by you. Help us to understand your word as we open it to right now. Help the kids and our parents or leaders to understand what it is you're saying through your word. And as we go through it, uh, touch our hearts, prepare them right now, Lord. Allow us to focus on your word. Allow us to focus on what you're talking uh, talking and saying to us through it. So we thank you for these wonderful privileges we have to know you. In the name of Jesus, we pray and thank you. Amen. All right, let's get going. I'm excited. Hopefully you are too. So as we said, today is lesson 3.1. Perhaps kids, you already went through and worked through 3.1, which is great. And maybe you moved on to 3.2 or 3.3. If you're still in section two or even section one, just keep working at it, kids. Don't worry about it. Just keep working at it. You'll eventually catch up. If you can do a couple of more lessons during the week, that would be great. So if you have some extra time, you can always catch up. So not to worry, work at your own pace. Make sure, above all things, though, before I forget, make sure that you do focus on your memory verse. As the Bible tells us that we hide his word in our heart. So that's very, very important. So above all the things that you do at Awana, the first and priority that we have as, as, uh, as leaders, and also I can understand as your parents as well, is for you guys to memorize your, uh, your memory scripture verse. This week's verse is quite short. It's John chapter 10, verse 30, and it reads the following, I and the Father are one. So if you haven't gone to that part yet, you can take a moment and, rem and memorize it. I and the Father are one. John chapter 10, verse 30. So I and the Father are one. John chapter 10, verse 30. So there you go. There's a memory verse. But, but remember, not only do we need to memorize it, but understand why it is we're memorizing it and what it actually says in what we memorized. So now that we have it uh, clear, John chapter 10, verse 30, as in memorized, Let's see what it says. So I and the Father are one. So who is speaking? So who's I? So right now we're talking about Jesus. And we're going to go through other lessons through section three. is all about Jesus. So I refers to Jesus. So Jesus and the Father, God our Father, is one. So let me draw a little diagram here for you. We'll do it old school. I'm actually going to use a pen and paper something you guys might not have used in a while. Uh, so God is three in one. God the Father, and I'll show you in a second. You're probably saying it in your head. God the Son, yes, we know that. And God the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit. So he is three in one. <clears throat> now, it's sometimes it's difficult to understand how a being who is three persons in one, each has its own... Um, responsibilities and each one is, has his own and fulfills different tasks and different things. We are loved by God who is one, but there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So do a little, I did a little diagram for you guys here. So we have like a circle and it's divided into three, three equal sections. So bear with me, they might not be exactly the same, but they should be the same. So this is just freehand. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit right here at the bottom. And each one does a different thing, but all the entirety the whole thing is God. So when we refer to God, that God, the three in one. So just quickly. So if you if you think back, God the Father dealt a lot with, we read about God the Father in the Bible, mostly in the Old Testament. 
So God the Father dealt with the with the Israelites. So we read about God the Father speaking with Abraham, with Isaac, with uh, Moses, with David. So that was God the Father. Then when we reach uh, Matthew, and then we go into the Gospels, read about God the Son. So we see God the Son who was made a uh, man. He was born, right? Remember, of Mary, a, vir a virgin. And so he came to, here to earth and lived with us and talked with us and taught us. And he did all kinds of miracles, all wonderful things. So that was God the Son. So that's our experience with God the Son here on earth. And it was only for about, for roughly about 33 years, right? Because we know, as the Bible teaches us, that God the Son was with us in person, in the flesh and blood here with us as a human being, still being fully God, uh, God and also being God man. But he was with us for about 33 years. So that wasn't very long. I'm actually 40. So I'm already seven years older than, than Jesus, my Lord, was here on earth. But don't forget that God, the Son, has always been. He always has been. He is who he is, right? He has no beginning and no end. So he is eternal. He has been here forever and ever and ever. Way before the earth was born, he was always was. He just is. He's Remember this way. Let me draw a little picture for you. So he always was as he is eternal, which means he has no beginning. He has no end. And I draw a little picture for you to help you uh, maybe remember. One second. Sorry for the silence. I'll draw another band right here. So my very crude and quick drawing is a present. It's a gift. Another word for gift is a present. So think about Jesus, God, completely God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as, a, as present. He's always been present. He always is. So that's a present that we have, right? He is present. He is here and now, always will be, and always has been. He was present in the past. He's present today. He's present right now. And he will be present forever and ever and ever and ever. So he's always the eternal present. So he's a present. And every day that we have is a present because he is present. It sounds like a tongue twister, right? So here we have Jesus. As we said, he's always has been, so he's present. But for 33 years, he was here on earth. And then God the whole, so that's in the New Testament. And then once Jesus goes back up to heaven to his father at the right hand of God, then he sends the Holy Spirit to, to people that remembers as followers of Christ, as we made a profession for the Lord. Then he promises the Holy Spirit who would lead us unto all truth. So that's God the Holy Spirit. So Old Testament mostly deals with God the Father. He, we read about him. And then the New Testament, we read about God the Son. And then New Testament onward, it's the Holy Spirit with the disciples and the New Testament church. And as that grows and Jesus blessed the, sorry, Holy Spirit grew and grew and did all kinds of miracles. So all the three in one are the same God, but each one has a different thing. Think about light, for example. You see light here and it's illuminating where I am and you have light there or back here. Sorry, you have to turn the other way. So we have the sun outdoors. The light we see is just visible light. But if you use a prism, I could do another little diagram, but like a little triangle, a little piece of glass maybe, and you shine a light through it, you might have already seen this, especially when there's a rainbow and there's uh, water droplets. The light goes through, hits this prism, and then on the other side, so it comes out like this, it goes in, sorry, like this, and it comes out like this, right? All kinds of different colors, and you see the rainbow. It's made up a whole different spectrum of, of of light of different colors and all those colors are contained within the light so try it if you want see if you can find different like a glass maybe a drinking glass or in the summer when you have your sprinkler system on and there's sun you probably see a little rainbow so then you'll see that light contains all these beautiful colors all these colors are different from each other because we can differentiate between one and another but when all these different colors come together then we just see one visible light so one thing made up of different things. So God is like that one God made up of different distinct persons, right? The person of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So they are the same. So as we go through our lesson, you read John chapter 10, 30, that we said Jesus and the Father are one. We can put the brackets and the Holy Spirit. They are one. And then we see that we just mentioned, and we'll read Matthew uh, 14, 13, 21. And if you go ahead and you read that one, we'd see that God... Um, did the same thing. God, I'm sorry, Jesus 
did all the miracles and the wonderful things that he did because he has the authority. He is able to do the miracles. He did them in the past and he for certainly can do them in the present. So God and God, the son and the Holy Spirit and God are the same. So he healed people. He made people even rise from the dead. We know Lazarus that happened. So he also taught the things that God, the father asked him to teach. So God, the father would give him the, the knowledge and the wisdom and the heavenly and divine wisdom and that he spoke and he taught the people. As he said, my words are not my words. They are my father's words. So whatever I see the father do and the father taught, taught me, this is what I teach you. So he passed along all that, the wonderful message on to the people. And even today we're reading it and it's right here, right in the, in the Holy Scripture in our Bible. We can read it from there as well. And just to focus here, just a, a verse to uh, emphasize the fact that Jesus has always been alive. Let's read some scripture. So if you want to go to Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. So Colossians is in the New Testament, chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. Again, you can pause the video, take your time, look for the verse, no worries. It's not a race. So just look for Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. All right, and it reads the following. The word of God says this, for by him... All things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So once again, it reads the following. For him, for by him all things were referring to Christ, to Jesus, Son, God the Son. All things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. So here we, see, here we see that he has been before all things. So he existed way before all the things that we see. And in him, all things hold together. So because of him and his love, everything just kind of works together. Remember? <clears throat> and one other thing that we can mention before we finish is that he can save us from the punishment of sin. If we have made the profession of the Lord, we decided to follow Jesus as a wonderful hymn says or song says without uh, turning back. So we can decided to follow Jesus. So because he is perfect, he was perfect. He is perfect. He will always be perfect. He was able to be the one to take the punishment for our sins because no one else could do that. No other human being could do what he did. So he was able to come. He says, lo, behold, in your book, it is written of me. I will go down, go to earth, pay the price of sin and the punishment of sin, taken upon myself, the one who had no sin. So he is perfect and blameless without spot. We read that in Isaiah 53 and other scriptures. But he said, I, he didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. He was, can just imagine, take a second here. A being, God, our, God the Son, our Lord Jesus, who was at the right hand and always will be at the right hand of God. He was, he had everything, dominion and power and authority, living in the wonderful presence of God in his kingdom. And he decides to come to earth and take up on the nature of a, of a person, of a man. And he decided that he would do that for us and take that punishment and sort of divert it from us and say, nope, not you, it will come to me. I will take it all myself. I will take the hit. I will do it for you. So you don't have to. So he fulfilled that part for us. And that's a wonderful, uh, there's no way to describe it, boys and girls, because once we made a profession of Christ and daily and daily, we ask God to forgive us and to guide our path. As the Bible says, I will hide my, your word in my heart that I not sin against you. And we have all these beautiful things that God has given us every single day. Just light outside is a blessing to see another day. And we have that because Jesus paid the price for us. And we have the hope of a salvation and we'll be with him in paradise. So he did that. He took the price of death. He was willing to do it for us. We read that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 21. Let's read that right now. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, and it reads this. So the scripture says, for our sake, so for our well-being, he made him, so God, Father, made him to be sin who, made, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So for our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, for what reason? So that in him, in Christ, we might become the righteousness of God. So through Jesus, we're able to do that. He took our punishment for that. One way to think about it, boys and girls, if you have maybe an older brother or older sister, or you have siblings, or just somebody you really admire, maybe a cousin or someone like that, 
And when you're younger, perhaps there's something that uh, that happens and they stand up for you, right? Or somebody, a friend in school, then they stand up for you, right? So that's a feeling. It's an amazing feeling to know that they're there. I have gone through that. And then there's somebody, my cousin, who stands up for me and stood up for me. And I feel secure. I feel, you know, that he's taking up that um, that pressure or that situation. He took it upon himself to protect me. And that's a beautiful feeling. And that was just a simple thing here on earth. But to take all the punishment, all of those things upon himself and to stand up for us before sin and to take that sin upon himself so that we could be free, that's something that we can only thank him in person uh, completely, but we can do that every single day. And how do we thank God for what he did and, and Jesus and the Holy Spirit for what they're doing for us is just have a communi communication with him through prayer and through reading the scripture. Now, I know this is running a little long, but I really did want to finish by reading chapter 17 of the book of John. Now, because of time, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I'm going to skip a little bit, but please do read John 17 because John 17 are the words of Christ himself. It is the only prayer that we have a record of. We know he prayed like all day, all night, at times all night, and he would constantly be praying, but we don't know exactly what he said in his prayers. But we were given a blessing in that chapter 17 of the book of John tells us exactly what he said. It was recorded for our own uh, blessing and uh, edification so we can grow. So I'm going to read it really quickly. If you just give me two more minutes. If I start here on verse 9, chapter 17 of John, verse 9, I am praying for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those for whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one. Listen to this, even as we are one. Oops. even as we are one. <clears throat> While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction by that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. Remember we said that? And these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but you keep them from the evil one. Verse 16, they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in that truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in their truth. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. So that's us. That they may be all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. So again, they are one. In them, and you are in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and love them, even as you love me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you have given me, because you love me before the foundation of the world. See, he's eternal. O oh, righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known. And to finish, it says that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. So let's finish with our own prayer. But thank the Lord that he was able to give us this portion of his, uh, his prayer. And it makes it very, I think it just kind of summarizes lesson 3.1. So I do encourage you to take notes and study John 17 uh, with your uh, with your parents and your leaders, perhaps, in small groups. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much again for a beautiful blessing that you have given us to gather together in scripture, to surround ourselves with a blanket of your love through your word. So thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you for your kindness, for your loving patience that you have with us. And more than anything, Lord, and thank you for allowing us one day in heaven to give you things. So thank you, Lord, for the wonderful privilege it is to know you. We ask for all those who do not know you, that they may come to know you, Lord, because we all need you. Thank you, Lord Father, uh, Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit for what you do to us constantly and continuously because of your love is everlasting. In the name of Jesus, we pray and thank you. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. Take care. Bye-bye.